Have you ever closed your eyes, savored a piece of chocolate melting on your tongue, and wondered what magic created that captivating flavor? And can you imagine that behind every seemingly simple chocolate bar lies an epic journey spanning thousands of miles across distant lands and through the hands of countless people? And West Africa, the land known as the heart of the world's cocoa industry, where over 70% of the global cocoa supply is nurtured and grown. From the lush plantations of Ghana to the Ivory Coast, premium cocoa beans are being carefully cultivated, waiting to be transformed into the key ingredient for renowned chocolate brands. Today, join us as we unveil the secrets and explore the miraculous journey of West African cocoa. From the vast, tropical forests to the moment it becomes the perfect chocolate bar melting in your hand. If there were a holy land of cocoa on the world map, it would be the Ivory Coast. Can you believe it? This nation supplies nearly 40% of the world's cocoa with over 2 million tons each year. But beyond those impressive numbers, are you curious about a sustainable agricultural ecosystem where every cocoa bean, every branch is meticulously cared for like a work of art to ensure gold standard quality? Growing cocoa is not just a profession, it's an art form, the secret to perfection. This means that every tiny detail can impact the distinctive flavor of the chocolate bar you love. To obtain healthy and productive cocoa trees, seed selection plays a crucial role. Only seeds with strong vitality, selected from parent trees with high yields and good disease resistance, are chosen for planting. Besides, soil conditions also greatly influence the tree's development. Ideal soil should have a pH between 5.5 and 7.0, be rich in organic nutrients, and have good drainage to prevent water logging. Cocoa beans are sown in nurseries before being transplanted to the field. When the seedlings are young, they need protection from the harsh sunlight. To maintain a stable growing environment, cocoa is often intercropped with bananas, rubber trees, or other large trees, at an appropriate density for root and canopy development. These trees help regulate temperature, maintain soil moisture, and protect the cocoa plants from strong winds. During their early years, Cocoa trees need extremely careful and meticulous care. This helps the cocoa trees to grow steadily and sustainably with high yield and helps to create sustainable ecosystem. This is an important key to maintain a healthy, productive and eco-friendly plantation. After about three to four years, cocoa trees will begin to flower, but this is just the beginning. It takes six months for the cocoa pods to fully ripen from pollination and only naturally ripened pods achieve the best quality. Besides observing the color to determine the ripeness of the cocoa pod, we can also gently tap the pod. If you hear a hollow sound inside, it's a sign that the pod is ripe and ready for harvest. Have you ever wondered why cocoa harvesting is only done manually and cannot be mechanized? Harvesting cocoa is not as simple as picking fruit. If done incorrectly, the cocoa tree can be damaged, affecting the following season. Absolutely, do not pull the cocoa pods forcefully. Harvesting requires using a sharp knife or specialized shears to cut gently, avoiding damage to the flower cushion where the next season's pods will grow. And harvesting should only be done in the morning or late afternoon avoiding the intense heat of the sun to prevent the beans from losing moisture. After harvesting, cocoa pods need to be opened within four days and the beans processed within 24 hours in order to keep their top quality. However, fresh cocoa beans still lack of specific flavor. That's why they need to undergo fermentation and drying processes to fully develop their natural flavor. A secret of the people of the Ivory Coast to maintain a stable temperature and help the cocoa aroma develop to its fullest during fermentation is to cover the cocoa beans with fresh banana leaves. 
This fermentation process usually lasts from five to seven days and is carried out using the traditional method of heap fermentation or in specialized wooden boxes. Initially, bacteria and yeast generate heat, raising the temperature of the cocoa beans to 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Then, natural enzymes become active, oxidizing and breaking down the inherent bitterness of the beans. Finally, the cocoa beans turn a dark brown color and develop their characteristic flavor. Have you ever tried this method? Please share with us. After fermentation, the cocoa beans are dried for three to eight days under natural sunlight, or they can be dried using machines to reduce the moisture content to below 7%. This drying process helps the cocoa beans fully develop their natural flavor and completely eliminates any undesirable sourness. Next comes the sorting and packing stage. After drying, the cocoa beans will have the pod husks removed, along with any moldy or substandard beans. The remaining high-quality cocoa beans are carefully packed and begin their journey of thousands of miles to chocolate processing factories around the world. Once at the factory, cocoa bean will continue to go through a refining process, precise to the degree, to become the batches of high-quality chocolate that we love. Let's continue the journey with us to discover this process. What secrets are hidden within cocoa beans before they transform into exquisite chocolate? Inside each cocoa bean is a world of flavor and quality determined from the very first steps. Before becoming delicious chocolate bars, cocoa beans must undergo a rigorous inspection process. Through test samples, factory experts can determine whether the cocoa beans meet quality requirements and detect any signs of mold. In addition, Depending on the growing region, cocoa beans will have distinct flavor nuances, from a mild bitterness and delicate acidity to fruity or nutty aromas. Inspection helps identify beans with the potential to create unique chocolate. And the color of the beans will be different, resulting in different flavors and roasting methods. After passing inspection, the cocoa beans are placed on baking trays and roasted at a temperature of about 110 to 140 degrees Celsius for 30 to 50 minutes, depending on the specific color of each type of bean. This entire roasting process is tightly controlled by modern technology. The temperature and roasting time are precisely adjusted to preserve the natural aroma and develop the characteristic flavor for each type of chocolate. During roasting, the thin, delicate outer shell of the cocoa bean becomes brittle and easier to remove, facilitating the next step of shell separation. Next is the step of separating the shell and grinding the cocoa beans finely. The roasted cocoa beans are passed through a specialized grinder, which crushes both the beans and the shells. This crushed mixture is then classified using a system of sieves with various sizes. Larger and heavier pieces are retained at the top, while the sieves gradually decrease in size for classification. Finally, a vacuum cleaner removes the lightest part, which is the cocoa bean shell. The remaining de-shelled cocoa beans are then passed through the grinder multiple times to create a fine cocoa powder. To obtain cocoa mass, pure cocoa. This fine grinding process is continued until the cocoa powder completely melts and forms a thick paste. Cocoa mass is the most important ingredient in chocolate, providing the indispensable rich and characteristic flavor. From here, cocoa mass can be used directly to make chocolate or can continue through the process of separating cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is the key ingredient that creates the smoothness and characteristic velvety texture of chocolate. The remaining cocoa solids after pressing the butter, called cocoa cake, are further ground to create cocoa powder, a popular ingredient in many different foods and beverages. Next, other ingredients such as sugar, milk, and cocoa mass are mixed according to precise formulas and proportions to create a variety of different chocolate lines. In some special recipes, vanilla or lecithin may be added to enhance smoothness and help the chocolate melt easily in the mouth. The mixture after initial mixing 
still has a slightly coarse texture and needs to be further refined to achieve the ideal smoothness. Cocoa mass will be further smoothed through the refining process. After the ingredients have been thoroughly mixed, this mixture will continue to be finely ground using roller mills or ball mills to gradually reduce the size of the ultra-small solid particles. Conching is one of the most important stages in the chocolate production process. Conching time can range from a few hours to several days, depending on the quality standards of the final product. Throughout the conching process, the cocoa mass is continuously stirred at a temperature of 50 to 80 degrees Celsius for a period of 12 to 72 hours. This helps to remove bitter compounds and highlight the delicious, characteristic flavor of chocolate. The chocolate mixture is transferred to a specialized refining machine with a system of continuously operating agitators to mix and aerate the mixture. At the end of the refining process, the size of the solid particles in the mixture will be reduced to below 20 microns mm. This helps the chocolate achieve a smooth, melting texture with no gritty or rough sensation when enjoyed. The next step is shaping and tempering, cooling and stabilizing the temperature of the chocolate. The tempering process involves repeatedly cooling and heating the chocolate from about 45 degrees Celsius down to 27 degrees Celsius, then back up to about 31 to 32 degrees Celsius. This is the crucial step that decide the shine, snap, and perfect structure of the final product. Why does chocolate need to be heated and cooled multiple times during production? The answer is, the chocolate is heated to about 45 degrees Celsius to break down the unstable crystals, then cooled to 27 degrees Celsius to create conditions for crystallization. When reheated to 31 to 32 degrees Celsius, only the stable beta crystals remain, giving the chocolate a beautiful shine, smooth texture, resistance to melting quickly, and preventing fat bloom. After the tempering process is complete, the molten chocolate is poured into molds. The chocolate molds are gently vibrated to remove any air bubbles trapped inside. The chocolate molds are then rapidly cooled at a temperature of 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, allowing the chocolate to quickly solidify and achieve a perfect snap. Once the chocolate has completely solidified, it is carefully removed from the molds and undergoes a final quality inspection. This is also the stage where manufacturers can create a myriad of unique shapes for their products, from traditional square chocolate bars to small delicate chocolates or even intricate artistic creations full of creativity. The final step in the chocolate production process is packaging the product. Chocolate needs to be stored at the appropriate temperature and humidity to ensure that its flavor and quality are preserved. Some manufacturers also use specialized packaging that can protect the chocolate from moisture and direct light, helping to extend the shelf life and preserve the product. Thanks to the remarkable advancement of modern technology, chocolate factories today can process tens of thousands of pounds of chocolate per hour, while ensuring consistent product quality and optimizing production efficiency. From here, the finished chocolate bars are distributed all over the world, reaching consumers and bringing moments of sweetness and flavor. From the cocoa fields in West Africa to the modern factories around the world, the journey of cocoa is a story of effort, creativity, and passion. Do you have a favorite type of chocolate? Do you know which chocolate has the highest cocoa content? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to discover more fascinating stories about agriculture and food technology.